Hey, how's it going? Hey, going good. Awesome, awesome. Oh, this is Swift. Okay. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. No worries. Take care. <laughs> you too. Hey, how's it going? Hello, how are you? Doing good, how are you? Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Are you here for Swift? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. I had someone come in that was just like, oh, this is Swift. And then it was just like, <laughs> nope. I was like, oh, whoops. Yeah. Perfect. Uh I'll give it a couple more minutes just to see if other people start filtering in and we'll get we'll get started. Sounds good. Can I ask you, um, as far as the actually teaching of the classes, is it only for uh, US citizens or can it be like Indians or? I believe it's anyone internationally. I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah, as so far as do, I know. How does someone uh, join, like how do they, actually uh, register if you know they have programming experience and they want to teach the class okay how how do they join like where would they sign up uh so signing up to actually teach the class i know there will probably be evaluations um i don't know specifically because that's more part of the ago learning platform than it is this class specifically so do you okay. mean after like are they already on the platform kind of thing no they want more information on getting on the platform gotcha yeah so i know i just did it it was a while back ago i guess but i just did it from um there's an app called handshake that i used and they had i, I think you can also just do it via the ego learning website which i can probably send in the chat Okay, well, I know I have like a Google Forms registration, so maybe I could send that to them as well. That'd probably work, yeah. Okay, okay. Just wondering. I mean, my husband, he's an electrical engineer, but they still had to learn some embedded language, you know, even for his um, career. So I thought it would be good for him to do as well. He's a, a good teacher. Yeah, awesome. <laughs>
yeah, I'm still figuring out some stuff is I just created this course. So this is a brand new course and we're looking for teachers for it. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, and I have a friend, he's a really, really good Swift uh, developer. He actually won a, an award for developing a Swift app, and but he works for Amazon. So I'm wondering, would he be interested in doing this as well? He's like super good. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had anyone else come. So I think we're just gonna get started. We'll talk a little bit about the course and okay. we'll go from there. So this is intro to Swift. So it's gonna be a lot of pretty basic stuff. So definitely with your friends that have a little bit more knowledge, um, as long as they're okay with doing the basics, um, that'd be awesome. This course mm -hmm. is geared towards students that are age 12 and up. Um, and then it's also geared towards students that don't necessarily have programming experience. They may have some programming experience, but usually it's going to be a little bit um, less than, um, you know, they're, they're going to be, it'll be pretty basic programming experience. Um, we're going to be learning about programming iPhone, iPad, and Mac apps in this class from design to development. So in this class, the requirements for the students, they will need an Apple Mac computer because that is necessary to run Xcode and no programming experience is required. Um, you know, always programming experience is probably helpful, but definitely we're gonna be just talking about the basics we're going to be assuming that these students don't know what variables are. We're going to assume no level of understanding of anything programming related. So lots of the basics in this class. A little bit about the history of Swift. You can definitely talk about this in teaching the class as well. It was introduced in 2014 in Apple WWDC, which is their worldwide developer conference, and it's become the most popular language for creating um, applications for the Apple ecosystem, namely Mac iOS and iPad OS, because it's replaced Objective C as that programming language. And then it's also a really popular language for software engineering jobs as well as app development jobs. If you just go Google on indeed.com or something like that, you can find tons and tons and tons of jobs that want Swift developers because lots of companies want to either create new apps right now, or they're trying to add new features to their existing apps or you know, maintain current apps. And all companies really want to get in on app development. So lots of career options. In this class, we're going to be talking about designing, developing, and deploying. Again, at a pretty basic level for everything, this is just kind of an entry level course into this is what Swift is about. This is how to create a super basic app. And it's kind of just encouraging students to kind of take the reins at the end because this is only going to be for 12 weeks. So in 12 weeks, you can't really talk too much about super complex stuff but definitely getting students excited about development. That's really what we're looking for. And then the final project will mostly be up to the students. I wanted to design this course to focus on helping students see the joys of development over just kind of giving them a bunch of stuff. So the beginning of the course will be a little bit more uh, structured, I guess. And then towards the end, it'll be create an app yourself. Feel free to ask the teacher about stuff, but a lot of being a developer is also just finding resources largely online um, to make those cool app ideas a reality. 
So that's kind of what I want to focus on. It's becoming a developer, not just learning some stuff and then forgetting about it. The course structure, it's going to be 12 weeks and each class is set up to be an hour long. And the classes, each of them are designed to be pretty flexible. They have a good amount of information to cover, um, but I think there's two days for the final project planned out. And if some of the material needs to bleed into some of the final project time, that is okay. It's okay to be flexible and to kind of mold it to what the students need. I want this to be focused on the students and not simply just trying to get through a bunch of information. So there will definitely be students out there that probably struggle a fair bit. And I want to make sure that we're focusing on those that are struggling. So a couple teaching tips. One is to have your, your camera on when teaching. It's just good to be able to kind of show your enthusiasm and also keep the students a little bit more engaged. And then also being able to like maintain eye contact with the students and the camera um, because that's what we have right now. We're not able to do anything in person. Uh, definitely make sure to smile and be energetic. It's easy to get um, a little bit bored, especially as a student and even as an instructor, um, but especially for students. And it's just good to kind of keep that enthusiasm up so that they're consistently engaged and interested in what you're talking about. And then consequently interested in iOS app development because that is what we're talking about. And it's really an exciting thing. Um, another tip is to ask questions to keep students engaged. Definitely, it can be a little bit hard to get students to get engaged sometimes, depending on the, on the class. There's definitely times when students are more engaged than others, but I've definitely had, especially in online teaching, it's easy for students to kind of drift off and not be super interested. Um, so definitely asking questions and asking for participation might be necessary. And then just remembering that awkward silences will almost certainly happen and that's totally okay, it's normal. And it doesn't mean that you're doing a bad job. It's just something that happens when doing online teaching because oftentimes students don't necessarily feel like participating. A few more teaching tips for the time being, it is okay to go slow. Um, this is something that I have specifically, I feel like struggled with is especially when I start talking about things in a teaching environment, it's really easy to go really quickly to just kind of get it done. And I realize how fast it's gone um, <laughs> only when it's too late. So it's okay to go slow and usually students will appreciate that. I know in my head, it feels like I'm always going slower than I actually am. So just remembering that it's okay to take it slow. It's okay to ask questions and it's okay to have some of those awkward silences. Those are normal. Um, so yeah, it can be easy to go too fast. Uh, and then also getting to know students. I think I don't think I have anything in terms of time set for this specifically. Probably could do that though. Um, but getting to know students is something that there's always time for. It's always okay to get to know where they're at, um, what their ambitions are, what they want to do. Um, maybe you talk about like app ideas that they want to create for their final project at the beginning or somewhere in the middle of the course itself. And it's always okay to uh, take some time to get to know students and talk about what they're excited about in terms of programming or whatever it might be. Because that'll definitely keep students engaged and it's just, it's just fun to get to know students. This brings us to participation. So getting to getting students to actually participate, it can definitely 
be a challenge uh, depending on the class. There's definitely times when it's, I've heard teachers when I was in high school, especially, I have heard teachers talking about how getting students to participate is like pulling teeth. And now I understand, um, I, can, I can empathize with that. So there's definitely going to be most likely those times when no one wants to participate and it just gets really difficult to get any participation and it can feel just kind of uncomfortable uh, for you as well as probably the students. So first, that's normal, it happens. And um, one of the things that I've found just from personal experiences, if students are shy, uh, telling them that they can send responses through the chat, that usually helps boost participation quite a bit. Some students just are really shy and they don't really want to talk, um, but they are usually more comfortable sending things in the chat. So keeping that in mind and just kind of being flexible too. I'm sure there's other methods out there that students would appreciate and it can increase participation quite a bit. Um, but that's just one thing that I have found. You can also try calling on students and asking them to participate. This can work to varying degrees. A lot of times that's all students really need is just you to call on them and then they're more than happy to participate, but it can also be kind of stressful. So that just depends. You need to be empathetic towards the students and be flexible again. And then really looking for that participation is something that I think good teachers want to have consistently, um, just because it shows that the students are indeed learning. There's been times when I just like hear almost nothing from a student and it gets a little bit, uh, I, I get a little bit nervous of if they're actually learning anything or if they're just playing games or whatever, which isn't ideal. Um, so trying to get that participation through whatever ways might work. And then if that doesn't work, you know, it, it is what it is sometimes um, and that is okay. Helping students is another important topic just for general teaching. Ensuring that students are able to follow along goes along really well with that taking it slow advice. Um, and then also helping students that get stuck. It can be stressful for students. You know, I've been there when I've been stuck and I don't want to talk about it and I don't talk about it and then I just don't learn anything. Um, so consistently trying to just show that you're there for them um, by being positive and encouraging. It, it really can go a long way um, to help students when they feel like they're just not understanding. And then one other thing, I don't think I put it anywhere. I might have put it later. I don't remember. But always being willing to repeat yourself. And it's OK to say something multiple times. That's totally OK. Because that is how students are going to be able to remember what you're talking about. A couple more teaching tips. Talk about what you will be doing in the future to get students excited. So this is mainly a point towards, there's points in this course where students may be a little bit confused as to why we're going over certain things. So in the course, you know, it starts off with pretty basic stuff. It's just downloading Xcode, which can take a good chunk of time and then just kind of showing them around. Xcode. Um, so that's kind of the start, nothing too crazy there. And once we get into the actual Swift language deep dive, especially to newer students, that could be a little bit confusing because they're going to be learning about pretty basic programming stuff. Um, but if they don't have any programming experience, it can be a little bit daunting. Um, so they'll be learning about functions, they'll be learning about variables, they'll be learning about things like control flow, 
and this can all be kind of a lot. So it can oftentimes be really nice to just kind of talk about what you'll be doing in the future. There's the main project that we do together, the, apart from the final project, is a soundboard app. And talking about how you're going to be creating that soundboard app, and they can put in their own sounds, they can do their own stuff with the design. Talking about how all of this will kind of culminate to being able to do that and creating their own apps can be really helpful. I have a question. Yeah. So will the students be working in virtual lab environments or will they actually have the um, IDEs like on their actual computer? It'll be their IDEs on their actual computer. And so I would have a need to do that as well. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's just a lot of features that having the actual Xcode app will be really useful. Okay. Um, and then let's see. Any other questions? Well, yes, what if the teacher needs help? <laughs> what if the teacher needs help? Um, I, I feel like I would probably need help all the time. Um, I think it just depends on the circumstance. You know, there's going to be times when the teacher doesn't know an answer to a question, especially with the final project. I've been thinking of that myself because I'm by no means like an amazing iOS app developer or anything like that. Um, so there will be questions probably with the final project where they're going to be like, oh, how do I create this like super complex game or whatever? They're going to overshoot a little bit. And, and so is there someone we can refer to or ask a question? Yeah, I think with things, with things in the course itself, I can offer my email and you can definitely ask me with things pertaining just to the course with the final project. I think one of the main things is helping students learn how to research for themselves. So pointing them towards resources like the official documentation, stuff like that. I think that will actually be more helpful than simply trying to give them an answer, especially if it's really kind of out there. Um, because I would not be surprised if there's students that say, I want to create this super complex game. How do I create that? And it's like, I I don't think even like professional app developers would be able to create that necessarily. Um, you need a team of people in a lot of those cases. So, and so we tell them it's outside of the scope, but they yeah. can feel free to do it on their own time and research it. Yeah, absolutely. Get back to me, I would be interested in seeing what you come up with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I well, that's that's something. So when I did uh, the overview of this course to kind of um, get an understanding of interest. We had like six or seven students that showed up that had interest. Um, oh, what was it? It was one of one of the students. I don't know. I came up with something, and one of the things that I I said on the slides was just you know if if you uh if you create the next new Uber or whatever, you know, keep me in mind, keep me in mind. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. so I, I think, I think definitely uh, saying that it's outside of the scope is probably good, especially if it's super complicated. If you know something about it or know where to point them, that's helpful, but don't feel like you know, need to know everything, especially with development. No one knows everything. <laughs> there's exactly. too, much, there's too much to learn. And there's a new library being created every day. We don't know everything, you know, there's just too much out there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's see, one other teaching tip is just help students understand why they're learning things. That kind of goes along with the uh, first point hand in hand, helping students realize like, okay, this code that I'm writing when we're creating like terminal apps, We'll do a little bit of that um, in, in Swift. Helping them understand why they're doing that because it can be kind of boring. I know for me, I like 
creating things that you can actually see and you can actually use and that's really cool um but there will be a little bit where it's more based in the terminal and it's just to help them understand the concepts of what they'll need to know to create those more complex features um so helping them understand how everything kind of fits together i think is really helpful to helping them get an interest in development and that is really what this course aims to do is sparking that interest um is in reality a lot of the uh actual technical stuff is all in the documentation it's on stack overflow it's on it's online um what this is mostly about is giving them the fundamentals and then saying you know go with it and go create something cool okay right. so also want to talk a little bit about the structure of the course and specifics and then we'll have the rest of the time for any questions and if there aren't any questions it's okay um i'm just going to give a brief overview of each class so the first class is literally just introducing like what is swift um so talks about the requirements and this will be available on the ego learning website if it isn't already um there's just different subsections of things like the history of swift which you don't need to spend too much time on and then downloading xcode which can take a good chunk of time um honestly yeah it just depends on internet connection i guess but it may very well take the entire class for them to download xcode so you can just talk about things about like oh yeah this is what xcode does and whatever and if it doesn't finish downloading it is totally okay to share your screen and talk about um what xcode is all about because each course will be recorded and you'll send it your, your, your recordings um, just so that students can use them as reference. So talk about opening Xcode, creating new projects, really simple stuff. And then there's a really simple challenge of just changing is the default app will just say, hello world. And the challenge is to change it to hello and your name. So. I've definitely tried to um, give a lot of reference material for each item. Um, so you'll be able to see like these images and when it comes to the coding uh, part where it's really focused on learning Swift, like the language itself, there's a lot of code that you can copy and paste and that should work out of the box so you don't need to worry about solving things yourself mm -hmm. okay uh, so that's first class pretty simple you can also give them time uh to get to know one another and also for you to get to know them second class is talking about swift ui which is how we create user interfaces in swift so you can talk about how I just have kind of an intro little paragraph here to talk about what Swift UI is and why it is a thing. So how you create user interfaces in Swift. There's also another option called UI kit, which is still used today, but it's kind of being phased out with Swift UI. Um, so students will learn how to use Swift UI, which is a programmatic way of creating user interfaces so you pretty much tell the computer this is what i want it to look like and it will look like that and it's really cool um and you can talk about see if anyone has any experience with like web development because it has a lot of similarities to things like html and css so um the challenge is literally just creating a user interface with a button a text field and a label 
and I have example code for you to use as an instructor so that you don't get lost. Um, let's see. And yeah, just kind of an idea of what the app looks like. And at the beginning, we're not too worried about the styling or whatever. If you have time, you're welcome to talk about things like styling. But I think remaining with the basics, making sure that students are able to do this and you can even do it again. So it has the emulator to the right. Yep. When you, okay. Yep. Yeah, so in Xcode, it, I guess it depends on how you have it set up. You can also, I think I, yeah, I have it on the bottom here. So it just depends on <laughs> what I'm feeling that day, honestly. Um, but you can have it wherever you want. Um, and you'll change the code in here. You can have like text and then add things like padding and add stylings, which I don't have too many stylings in this. This is just kind of starting out. And then you create different elements um, with code here. And this updates in real time, which is really nice. And you can also run the, uh, the app itself. This is a little bit more fun when you actually start creating elements that actually do stuff. But um, it's really nice to be able to just code something and then be able to see exactly what happened. You don't need to run it every time to be able to see the changes to the user interface, which is, which is excellent. Uh, not going to talk too much about keyboard shortcuts in this class, but Command Shift L is a good keyboard shortcut just to open your library of stuff uh, to you so that you don't need to remember how exactly to create a button like this. You can literally just do Command Shift L press the button, and then it will put the code in for you, which is, again, a really useful thing to have. Let's see. So the challenge for this is just giving students an opportunity to find apps that they enjoy, whether it be on iPhone, a tablet, or iPad, or Mac, and then giving them opportunity to kind of say, this is why I like it, talk about the design and recognize things like buttons, text, images, stuff like that, and just kind of see how code can create really cool experiences. So that is the second class. The third class is intro to Figma. So Figma, it's okay if instructors don't know too much about Figma because it's pretty simple and we won't go into it too deep. And this talks about how to use Figma for the instructors as well. Um, but it's just a free browser-based tool that allows you to create designs for apps. And I wanted to include this as part of the curriculum because Showing students how to actually develop apps is awesome, but it's hard to develop an app if you don't have an idea or a design. So helping them be able to see how to design an app, even if it's pretty simple designs, that is, I think, really cool to um, have the opportunity. So it shows you how to like create artboards, stuff like that, um, and put elements onto the screen just to get an idea for a design. So the challenge is just creating a basic login screen. It doesn't need to look like this necessarily, but it's just creating a login screen and seeing how different elements can um, be put together to look nice. So that's class three. It was just kind of focused on design. Class four is first app. So this will be cool. I want to make sure I have this right. Yeah, okay. So this is a pretty long class. 
Um, so I'll just be talking about adding things like buttons and actually using those to create apps. So it will be somewhat similar to um, things before. Um, but that's class four. It'll be having a button that eventually is able to play a sound, which will be used for the soundboard app. So that might take a little bit more time. Class five is when we get into the deep dive of Swift as a language. So we've created a really simple app and now we're able to kind of talk about the language itself and kind of the more uh, programming related stuff. So talk about things like variables, printing and functions. I have some example code here and this is all stuff that you can copy and paste into your, your editor. So that is no problem. This should be able to work out of the box. So you should be able to just copy, paste it and work. <coughs> Um, this is just kind of some simple stuff of like arrays in Swift, if statements. Um, I don't think we talk about, I think we wait for loops until the next class. Um, so basic functions and spending a good chunk of time on this is probably a good idea because especially if students are new to programming, this can be kind of a lot. So. The Swift use um, parameters. The Swift use parameters. Yeah. Is there a section about that as well, where they don't get into that? Yes. Yeah. So we talk about parameters a little bit. We actually have them in this um, in this function. So talk a little okay. bit about parameters and arguments. Okay. We don't focus too much on them though, because well. Yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about them, but there isn't like a dedicated class, I guess, to parameters specifically. Okay. Class six will be mostly about loops. <laughs> and we'll also be talking about if statements more. So um so again, lots of good uh code just to use for reference, um, things like four loops counting to 10 and printing hello 10 times kind of thing. Um, also talk about while loops. And then things like getting user input in Swift. If statements again, also using comparison operators, random number generator in Swift. So this definitely isn't comprehensive in terms of like everything you need to know about Swift, but gives you a good idea of kind of what you can do. And then for those that have some programming experience, this might be kind of boring because it's pretty normal stuff in terms of programming. So I think with those two classes specifically, it can be easy for students to kind of be in a bit of a, a almost like a, kind of a hierarchy almost. Some might be pretty um, high in terms of knowledge and then some might be lower. So just recognizing that. And you know, I, I do in those situations is it teach the students that are a little bit further ahead, I kind of let them help teach so to speak yeah so like i'll call on them and maybe tell them well tell us this tell us that it'll keep them engaged and yeah. you know make them feel like they're helping at the same time yeah that's awesome yeah okay so this is the start of kind of the big project that isn't the final project is creating the soundboard. Um, so starting with creating the soundboard, 
and this will take a number of classes. Um, so showing students how to design just something super simple. This obviously doesn't look super great because it's just supposed to kind of be quick. And that's just to show that it doesn't need to be anything super elaborate. If students want to spend more time to make it look awesome, um, that's that's great. So <clears throat> it's showing students how to design something like this in Figma. And again, it's really quite simple. Um, you're pretty much just creating shapes, and that's about it. Um, what makes it a, a soundboard? What was that? What makes it a soundboard? I'm just wondering. Oh, yeah. So soundboards are just um, you just, like press on the squares, and then they make a sound. Oh, so OK. That's, like a PM. that's the app that we're creating. OK. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So creating a user interface. We'll talk a little bit about this in Swift UI. And then there's also a link to kind of a finished version of a soundboard at this uh, GitHub link. So you're welcome to have a look at that um, for just a completed version of a soundboard. Um, let's see. So at least for the plan for this class, we start with just some basic code of talking about stacks. Mm -hmm. um, and stacks in Swift UI are just ways of creating user interfaces. So Z stacks stack one on top of a, one on top of another kind of in a 3D way. So you can have an example of that would be this is kind of the bottom of the stack for a Z stack, and then this would be on top of that, as you can see the green over the like line. layers. Yeah. So we talk a little bit about stacks, and we talk about um, other types of stacks. You don't necessarily need to talk about them now, um, but there's also V stacks and H stacks, which are vertical. So you can have stacks that are vertical layers and then also horizontal. So that's how you're going to be creating user interfaces. And those will mainly be covered in next class. And that's kind of like, that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to talk about soundboards. It's just because it's a grid, it's easy to kind of see how V stacks work, literally mm -hmm. just one on top of another, and then Z stacks, and then uh, H stacks as well, and they get introduced to all of those. Okay. So this class, I have it as class eight and nine, um, just because it's a lot of information, and I think it should just be flexible in terms of everything. So just making sure that it's okay that um, you might only get to a certain point, and you can even spend more than just two classes on it, because it is a lot of material. But we have source code for the actual app itself, which can be really useful. And you can literally just copy this all. A lot of this is also repeated code, um, just to make it easier for, for students. So it looks like a ton, but a lot of it is just repeated stuff. And then we talk about stacks. We talk about some basic styling stuff. We talk about adding images to the buttons. And that just about does it. So that'll probably take two or more classes. And then class 10 is mainly focused on actually adding sounds. Shouldn't take super long is we already have the actual interface. Um, so we're just adding sounds to the buttons. And then when the button is pressed, it plays a sound. And students are welcome to get sounds from when, wherever they want. There's a lot of free websites to download uh, free sounds. And then 11 and 12 are mainly final project work days. And this is really good 
So that if you need class 11 to be used for that last app, that is okay. Uh, if you even need to use class 12, that is okay as well. And it just gives students time to discuss with other students what they want to do, um, give time to research, work time, and then eventually share their ideas of what they want to do. And then the last class is really just showing where they're at so far. If they have started coding, showing what they've been able to code. If they haven't, talking about still their ideas and their designs. And then that just about does it. And the conclusion is really important, just talking about how students can grow as a developer and setting them up on their way to create cool stuff. So that is kind of the main gist of the course. Okay. Do you have any when questions? Yes, when does this course start? Um, so that would depend on instructor availability. So yeah, it, it can we're looking to start pretty soon. Um but it all kind of depends on when an instructor is available to actually teach. And I think that's one of the things in um the Google Forms. So Okay. And, and then you like is there a quote unquote HR side to this? Like who do you talk to about like pay and that kind of thing? Because I'm I'm just now coming in. Someone sent me this information. So I know nothing about the platform or anything. <laughs> yeah. So are you on are you on the Discord? Yeah, you're the second person that asked me that. Um, no, um, the instructor from the last class just sent me um, a Google form registration. And I think I need to start there. I think I'm pretty behind. <laughs> yeah. So I have to get caught up. But he, I think that's the first step is getting registered. And then he sent me his email address. Um, yeah, so let me see this form. It says, um, let's see if it'll pull up. Um, is a student teacher sign up, basically. Yeah. So that is that where I start? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, and then uh, once I register, they'll probably give me more information and set me up on the system yeah yeah so you should be able to get set up on the system and then there will be uh things like depending on what course you want to actually teach you can um there'll be evaluations to get evaluated to make sure that you're able to teach the course and usually that's just teaching like one like actual class of the course so in this it might be you know teaching class five of the course and then Oftentimes it's only you know, 15 to 20 minutes of teaching just to kind of get an idea of your teaching style. And then they'll let you know um, at some point of, oh, this course is available at this time. Would you be interested in teaching it? Can you teach more than one? Yes. Yep. And so obviously for this class, I would need a Mac. Yes. Okay, I need to get it back from my nephew because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it right now. And I was hoping there was some kind of Windows emulator from like make it like a Mac. <laughs> no, sadly there isn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so yeah, I'll have to get it back from him. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, hopefully I'll be speaking with you soon. Sounds good. And then, let's see, I, man, I'm just trying to remember if I have any other tips. I, I've been kind of working with this platform for 
a little over a year, I think now. So I'm trying to remember exactly what <laughs> what things were like. Um, but yeah, it'll be just sign up via the Google form and then setting up a time um, for evaluations, so. Okay, that'll work. And I, I guess when I set up the Google form, I'll tell then like what languages I'm interested in teaching. Yeah, yep. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.